RD computation. Um, the first talk will be about size hiding computation for multiple parties uh, by Katsumasa Shinagawa, Koji Nuida, Takashi Nishide, Goshiro Hanoka, and Eiji Okamoto. And Katsumasa will keep it all. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Kazumasa Shinagawa from University of Tsukuba and AISTO. I'd like to talk about size hiding computation for multiple parties. This is a joint work with Koji Nuida, Takashi Nishide, Goichiro Hanaoka, and Eiji Okamoto. In secure multi-party computation, each party, PI, has some private input, XI, and the parties wish to compute a function Y equal F of X1 to Xn without revealing the inputs. In this talk, we will consider the case, the single output, that is, all parties wish to compute the same function and assume semi-honest adversaries and the number of corruption is up to n minus one. The size hiding computation, uh, which is um, the main target of this talk, is a secure multi-party computation protocol that can hide sum of input and or the output sizes from sum of parties. Each private size can be hidden from different set of parties. So there are many types of size hiding, but it is well known that some of size hiding is impossible in general. So it arises a natural question, which type of size hiding is possible in general? In this talk, In this talk, we give a complete characterization for the feasibility of size-hiding multi-party computation, assuming the existing of FHE. Specifically, we assume the FHE with circuit privacy. Before proceeding the technical details, I will show the mm, two applications for size hiding computations. The first one is the set intersection protocol. Suppose that the police has a list of terrorists, X, and the company has a list of customers, Y, and the police wants to, want to compute the intersection X and Y without revealing the size of X and the size of X is related to the number of terrorists. The naive approach is padding approach and use the standard multi-party computation protocol, but it is inefficient because the complexity of the protocol depends on the upper bound of the input, even when the actual input is very small. The other application is a millionaire problem. Suppose several aliens wish to compute which planet has the largest population, and the population is related to the military power in the planet. So they wish to hide the population. Moreover, the input size is also related to the military power, so they wish to hide also the input size. In this case, the padding technique doesn't work because the largest population in the universe is too large. Okay, this is the outline of this talk. I'll first introduce notations for size hiding and I'll explain the previous result for two-party setting. And I will give 
the complete classification for multi-party computation protocol. But in the standard model, almost all sizes cannot be hidden. So to circumvent this impossibility result, we, um, we introduce a strong secure channel model, which is a new model. And it is implementable by steganography. And finally, uh, this is uh, our main contribution. Uh, we give a complete classification for multi-party computation protocols in the strong secure channel model. Uh, the fact uh, the, our theorem shows that many sizes can be hidden in the strong secure channel model. Firstly, let me introduce notations for size hiding. If there is an edge from the party I to the party J, then party J can know the size of XI. Conversely, if there is no edge from party I to J, PJ must not know the size of XI. And we also consider the case, some parties must not know the output size. We denote such a party by the cross circle. This is an example of a size hiding graph. Hereafter, uh, we call uh, such a graph a size hiding class. In this class, party two must not know the size of x1 because there is no edge from party one to two. And party three must not know the output size. So this class has two private sizes. The private size uh, x1 and the output size. And we say that a size hiding class is feasible if general multi-party computation is possible in the class. And we say that a class is infeasible if it is, if it is not feasible. OK, I'll explain the previous result given by Lindel, Nissim, and Orlandi, Azure Crypt 2013. They showed that hiding two or more sizes is infeasible in two-party setting. Specifically, um, they show that um, the left classes, um, these classes have at most one private size are feasible. And the right classes, um, they have at least two private sides are infeasible. OK, this, um, let me um, explain our first result, the classification for multi-party computation. This is the extension uh, of the LNO 13. And we showed that even in the multi-party computation setting, it is infeasible to hide two or more sizes. The infeasibility is proven by techniques of LNO 13. And the protocol, the feasibility, the protocol for hiding the uh, one input size is the following. The first, the parties, all parties invoke key generation protocol for threshold FHE. And each party, PI, sends encryption of XI, that is, an ciphertext of threshold FHE, to the party, party one, uh, who has the um, private input size. And party one then computes encryption of Y. Uh, y is the output value. Uh, using homomorphic evaluation algorithm and broadcast it. Finally, the parties invoke decryption algorithm and they can obtain the output value. 
This is a protocol. Okay. But um, um, in the standard model, uh, it is impossible to hide two or more sizes. It is very strong limitations. So next, I will explain the intuition why multi-parties do not help size hiding. This is a size hiding class which is proven by infeasible. If we add the additional party, P3, who can know both the um, size of X1 and the size of X2. But this class is still infeasible. Why? Party 3 can know the size of X1 and the X2. However, P1 cannot send encryption of X1 or message of length related to the size of X1 because uh, the channel between the party 1 and 3 may leak the message length to the party 2. This is a limitation um, of the standard, um, standard channels. To overcome this such a limitation, we introduce a new model, the strong secure channel model. In the standard secure channel model, the um, adversary cannot obtain the entire message, but he can know the size of message. In the strong secure channel model, adversary cannot know um, even the size of message. This such a, such a channel can be implementable by steganography. So it is considered to be reasonable model. Okay. Um, next, I will explain the, our main result. Um, that is a complete classification for multi-party computations in the stand, strong secure channel model. In the strong secure channel model, n sizes, well, n is the number of parties, n sizes can be hidden in the maximum sense. For example, this size hiding class um, has three private inputs. Remember that if there is no edge from this party to this party, um, this party cannot know the input size of this party. So uh, in this class, um, all of input sizes are private. So this class has three private sizes. However, uh, it is infeasible in the secure channel, but it is feasible in the strong secure channel model. Several types of um, some of classes is uh, some of classes are still infeasible even in the strong secure channel model. This size hiding class is one of the uh, such class. Wait, I'd, um, I'd divided um, our theorem into two cases when the output size is public and, and the output size is private. So I will, um, I will explain the first case when the output size is public. In this case, size hiding computation is feasible in the strong secure channel model if and only if for every parties i and j um, there is an edge from i to j or j to i or there is a party k that satisfies there is an edge from i to k or j to k. Ah, 
I2K and J2K. This triangle case is feasible because every pairs are connected. So this graph satisfies this condition. On the other hand, this such a size, such a size hiding class is infeasible. Since this party and this party, diagonal parties uh, does not satisfy this condition. Let me explain the main idea for construction in the case of three-party uh, triangle setting. The key idea is sharing protocol. Just the sharing protocol for party one is the following. First, party three sends to party one the cipher text of X3. Uh, this bracket means um, a cipher text of threshold FHE. Um, P3 computes the concatenation of flag and X3. And P3 sends to P1. Uh, this is OK because uh, remember that there, are, there is a party 3, uh, there is an H from party 3 to party 1. So the party 1 can know the size of X3. So this step is OK. And the party 2 sends to party 1 the following cipher text. If the size of X1 is greater than or equal X2, then the party 2 compute the um, cipher text of X2 with padding and with flag. If the size of X2 is greater than the X1, then he computes the zero cipher text. The party two can know the size of X1, so P2 can do this. And this is OK, because um, the both cipher text, uh, the length of both cipher text is the related to the size of X1 only. And invoking sharing protocols for P1, P2, and P3, one of them can obtain all flagged cipher text. Specifically, the party who has the largest input can obtain all flagged cipher text. And the party can compute the encryption of the output. This is the main idea for construction. Um, I will explain the infeasibility uh, in the case of square size hiding class. Suppose this class is feasible and let capital F equal small f of x1, x2 and let P a, party A is the joint party, the party one and party three, and party B equal party two and party four, then this protocol for capital F is um, two party protocol for small f. And, um, and this class has two private sizes because the um, in this case, X3 and X4 are dummy inputs. So party A and party B uh, cannot know the input size of the other party. However, it contradicts LNO13. So this size hiding class is infeasible. I will explain the case two, when the output size is private. 
in this case, size hiding computation is feasible in the strong secure channel model if and only if for every party who must not know the output size, the party can know all input sizes. And there is a party who can know the output size. Uh, the party satisfies this condition. This is a feasible class because these parties can obtain all input sizes. And this party can know the output, um, sorry, this party can know the input size of this party. And this party can know the input size of this party. So this graph satisfies this condition. This is an example of infeasible class. Um, all of the parties um, cannot know, must not know the input size of this party. So um, the latter condition does not satisfy in this class. Okay, I will explain the main idea for construction in the case of this size hiding class. The key idea is to use, is to combine the security of FHE and the MPC. The, we take two strategies, the P3 and P4 are not involved in key generation algorithm because and they must not know the output size, so they must not join threshold, decry threshold decryption algorithm for the ciphertext of Y. And they do evaluation protocol using MPC and obtain the ciphertext of Y with zero paddings. Thanks to the padding, they can do this without knowing the output size. This is a flow of the protocol. Firstly, P1 and P2 invoke key generation algorithm, and P3 and P4 get encrypted input shares. And using these shares, they evaluate using MPC. And finally, and P1 and P2 invoke special decryption for the ciphertext that can be generated by this step. The key observation is the following. Uh, and we note that um, in this case, we, um, sorry, in this talk, we assume adversaries can corrupt up to n minus one parties. So in this case, um, three parties. If P1 and P2 are corrupted, then FHE does not work. But in this case, the protocol, the security of the protocol is derived from the security of MPC. And if these parties are corrupted, MPC does not work. However, the security of the protocol is derived from the security of FHE. So FHE or MPC guarantees the security. So it works correctly. And let, let me skip this slide, because this step is similar, similar to the case one. Thank you for your attention. That's all. So any questions or comments? Yes, I was wondering if you considered adversary structures, so not necessarily corrupting n minus one, but corrupting subsets, 
and if that can help you achieve size high in computation if you assume that certain uh, sets of adversaries can players can be corrupted and not others. So, for example, you can corrupt the first and the second player, or you can corrupt the third and the fourth player, but not. Uh, so, if those types of things can help with size hiding computation. Okay, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't understand your question. So, uh, please um, talk about in the offline. Any? Yeah. I hear, I hear you uh, use uh, stereography. Uh, I will uh, please uh, tell me uh, how uh, data hiding scheme to use uh, to implement uh, your model. Could you speak? Uh, could you how, repeat again? How to use uh, data hiding? How to uh, use data hiding? Yes. Uh, how to use uh, data hiding to implement uh, Im, uh, implement uh, your model? Sorry, uh, the last part is what? What is the last part? Um, How to use? How did you? Uh, Which uh, data hiding scheme you uh, use to uh, uh, impl uh, implement uh, your model? Yes. Types, type of uh, data hiding scheme. I, um, the strong check second channel model is uh, considered to be implementable using steganographic techniques, but um, the concrete construction um, does not exist. So it is one of the open problem to um, construct such a strong second channel model. Um, does it make sense? Okay, we ran out of time, so thanks okay. to your customers.